Hey everybody, Rodamon here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 4 of Dawn of Man. So I've been re receiving a lot of good tips, and one of them was questioning why I hunt the way I hunt. So let me just explain why I do a lot of manual hunting. The reason being is auto hunting will tend to target uh, certain animals that will flee from your hunters, right? And when they flee, they run really, really, really excessively far away from your base, which means it's very difficult to sometimes uh, harvest them. And then sometimes they get away. And when they get away, your hunters will be very, very far away from the base, fatigued from the chase, and yield nothing. So I tend to want to manually hunt when I can in order to ensure that it is a successful hunt and that people don't get injured. Because additionally, auto hunting could also have you trigger uh, um, trying to hunt dangerous creatures one-on-one, -on -one, which is definitely a recipe for disaster. So we just got a trader here, and I wanted to explain commission. Uh, commission is pretty much how much markup the trader will take. Uh, so this trader does not take a lot of markup. So I'm going to go ahead and buy some of their leathers at the cost of me selling some harpoons. I'm not that worried about harpoon. Oh, and I'm, I'm also going to buy some. No, I won't buy bones. All right, there we go. I'll buy one bone. I'm not that worried about harpoons because I don't have a lot of fishing jobs queued up. Um, so in fact, what I should go is into the limits, which is F4, and reduce the number of fishing tools that I have. So I will have fishing tools for 25% of my population rather than 50% because I rely on it a lot less. The reason I rely on it a lot less is you can't get leathers from fishing. You can get leathers and bone from hunting. Hunting, fishing is easy, sure, but um, banks can be depleted. So there's a limited amount of fishing you can do and it doesn't yield some of the resources that you'd otherwise want. Mufflon. I need to kill two Mufflon for, for reasons. So one of the ways that I find it easy to... Oh, that's the old trader. I find it easy to set up uh, hunt zones is I will set an auto hunt zone and queue up a bunch of people to, to grab bows and better hunt tools. And then once they approach the hunting area, I'll manually control them to make sure the hunt goes better. Because what will end up happening is four people will queue up for these four mufflon. And the likelihood of those mufflon getting away are pretty high if it's a one versus one over and over and over. Now looking at my resources, uh, what I'm going to do is change my tannin zone to include this area over here. And then cut down the trees here. Really soon I'm going to have cereal domestication which means I will have the ability to plant farms and I'll put my farms back near this haystack. I have this haystack sort of queued up and ready to go. As for knowledge, let's go ahead and make four more hearths. I'm gonna keep one of them and discard the other uh, four or three. So we'll put a hearth here. And then we'll put some that I'll just break down over there. Yes, it is a little weird that you have to make multiple copies of certain objects in order to get knowledge. It's just the way the game is. I don't think anyone has queued up to even hunt those creatures. Odd, interestingly and oddly enough. Workload is too high. Let's go through the work areas and reduce the workload. I don't... Um, yeah, I don't need stone at the moment. All right, so these are the hunters going after wild donkey, going after wild donkey. So I'm going to grab all three of these guys and go after whatever this is, a boar? Yep, 
a little baby boar. I'll feel bad about it. But it's easy, low-hanging fruit for hunt. And some new humans have just joined the settlement. Alright, so I need two mufflon for the tech. I'm spooking this one. Let's see if I can't recover it. Right, let's go after the one I wounded. Go into primal vision. Oh, it died anyway. Okay, so we got the we got the five mufflon. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel whatever I had queued up for these guys. So we just got the knowledge from Mufflon Killing. Uh, next creature, Ibex. I should be able to find two Ibex to kill with relative ease. And then we can also make the hearths for uh, the extra benefit. It's warning me that I don't have enough clothing. I'm well aware. But thank you, game, for keep warning me. It's because I had sort of really quick uh, population growth that I hadn't really planned for. And as a result, it can be difficult to clothe them all. I didn't get away. Come on. You're a healthy adult. Let's go. I don't plan on butchering this one. I'm just killing it for the knowledge. Because boar. We're a boar. Oh, no, never mind. That's not all that helpful. The likelihood of going all the way up to 50 is pretty low. Woolly rhinos, however. That I could get knowledge off of. In the wintertime, the wintertime I tend to like to cook. Um... Mostly because there's not really anything to harvest but trees in the winter. So it's a really good time to cook and build and do those kind of sort of things. Expand your base in the winter because you'll have a lot of idle uh, people that don't otherwise have work. If I look at my workload chart, uh, come winter time, it steeply drops because certain things like gathering um, is obviously halted. So I'm making these extra hearths because I need the knowledge of constructing them, but I don't really care for the uh, keeping them. It's very easy to feed multiple people on one hearth. It's two hearths is probably enough for like 30 people, I'd, I'd imagine. They don't eat very often. So... So I'm clearing out some fields here in order to plant farm. The next tech I'm going to get, if I go into my uh, F7, will be serial domestication. I have to unlock the, I guess I'll call them pillar technologies. Uh, without them, you're not going to be able to do much else. All right, so I build my, built my five hearths, and now I just need one more knowledge to unlock serial domestication, which is great because it's almost springtime. And there we go. Now I have it. We survived the winter. And uh, now I can go and plant the crops. So to go over the um, crops here, Emmer, you can find all of these crops you can find out in the wild. It's just we're harvesting them domestically. So Emmer he produces extra grain for food. Barley produces extra straw for animal uh, food and also for construction and uh, then the last crop icorn is disease resistant so I'm gonna I, I tend to want to all right I'm gonna plant another field here there we go two giant fields of barley I find barley is my favorite crop because I'm almost always needing some extra uh, straw 
So straw um, is a construction material for thatching, for construction, you know, for roofing and whatnot. Also for clothing and, well, not so much for clothing, but for um, feeding farm animals um, in the wintertime. And if you want to learn about farming, you, you can always click the prompt there. So I have high prioritized my entire farm. I definitely, definitely want to get them to farm. Uh, one thing that you're going to need when you're farming, especially a large farm, is haystacks. That will allow your straw to last longer. And then the grain will get pounded in the mortars and then cooked into bread on the hearths. I'm going to go into my limits and... I am not going to produce any more slings. I have bows. For bows, everything else is good, I guess. New trader has arrived. Hello. Your commission is high, so I have to pay you extra. I will buy your flint, though. He's gathering my own flint. It's kind of annoying. And what else can I buy? I'd like some of your wool, and I'll sell my slings for it. And there we go. We didn't trade much, but I'm okay with it. So I see some of my people aren't happy, but generally speaking, my welfare is pretty decent. Alright, so now that the farm fields are planted... Um, they will idle until the fall when we harvest them. And looking at my overall resources, stone's a little low, bones are a little low. Wood is going to be high because I cleared a lot of trees, but now I'm going to cancel the, the tree clearing. We've cleared enough for our farms for now. I don't need to keep killing off the trees. And that will lower my, as you can see, it drastically lowers my workload. The workload is F5. And you can see your, your food, your straw, your population, your domestic animals. So, for instance, I have like four dogs and your workload. There is a lot of UI in this game. So, for instance, if you hit six, just the number six, as you can see, I have a few unproductive people now. Uh, which means they need jobs. So, what I'm going to do, wolves, perfect. I am going to queue them up to hunt some wolves. And if I wanted to, I could also capture these wolves. Now, what's a little weird about that is if I captured these wolves, they would, like, oddly turn into dogs immediately. Which is kind of strange, but that's just the way it works. Uh, I'm hunting wolves because I haven't killed a wolf yet. And that is needed for uh, knowledge. So I just hunted my first wolf. And let's go ahead and manually hunt. Because the wolves will fight back, as you would expect. And there is the knowledge for killing five. Once you hit five, the, there is huge diminishing returns. So we look at this, or I guess once you hit ten, the diminishing turns then goes up to fifty. Uh, getting ten... Pretty obtainable. Getting 50, you really have to go out of your way. So I, I generally tr aim to try to take on uh, 10 of everything that's easily locally accessible and available. I do also need some Ibex. Uh, there's just a single Ibex here. There doesn't seem to be others. I can go into Primitive Vision. Because these are Mufflon. They're not Ibex. They're different. They look pretty similar, but they're different. Uh, Moflon, I need five more. Ibex, I need two more for knowledge. But now we're going to go harvest those wolves that I got. And looks like uh, the wolves took down an Ibex, and I can harvest the uh, the Ibex as well. Because the wolves are obviously not going to use user. Use 
So if I get one more person, I'll also get the milestone. So if you hit five, you can see milestone expansion, 20 people. Now there's a bunch of different scenarios in Dawn of Man. Each one has their own unique set of milestones. They're all fairly similar to one another, but they're unique to its, uh, your specific uh, scenario. So keep that in mind. Not every scenario will have a uh, 20 people milestone that you'll need to hit. Having all these mouflon here makes you want to kill them for the... Uh... So dragging, I said this before, but dragging box and holding H and releasing only selects your hunters. And I'm going to try to get the 10 mouflon uh, knowledge. But I definitely spooked, spooked them. I did not sneak up. I was hoping to spook them into the water, but that didn't really happen. This reminds me of like Age of Empires, when you have like swarms of people attacking one little enemy or whatever. Alright, come on adult man. Chase it. I think this is the last one I need. Yeah, this is the last one I need for the big knowledge boost. Which is why I'm, I'm definitely attempting. Now, animals do have their own stamina. And, and this one is wounded, so it should be easy to hunt. And if you double right click, you can... Oh, it says it escaped, but I'm staring at it, so I know that's not true. Alright, so the one with the bow, I'm going to send forward. Bows being better than spears and harpoons. Come on. Run. There we go. You made me work for that. All right. Well, <laughs> there's the knowledge. Uh, I'm just actually going to cancel the task of butchering it. It is way too far from the base to bother with. We are in like a whole different section of the map over here. But hey, the lengths I go for knowledge knows no bounds. And there's obviously uh, I have a automatic hunt here. Get rid of that for now. I'd like to take out the the uh, the giant mammoths, but I'm going to need a rather large hunting party to do that. And let's... Oh, no, my workload is a little light, actually. I was thinking it wouldn't be. So all these guys... You're going to group up. And... Let's go bag a mammoth. Or a few, in fact. Now, mammoths, unlike some of the other creatures, don't spook easily. So, I can sort of group up. And that's how you bag a mammoth. 10,000 BC style. Alright, I'm going to stand my ground. Some people get wounded, but most of them are okay. And this other one is older. So it should be a little bit easier to hunt. Yep. And we are one mammoth away from double knowledge. And as you can see, there's a lot of raw skins, meat, bones that can be utilized from mammoth. And now I've definitely added a ton of workload to the group, which will register soon, once they butcher that stuff. Yeah, 
So as you can see, everyone has tasks. Uh, that would be six to see the tasks menu. And then seven shows you literally what they're doing. So Gorgag is crafting leather. Uh, Amen Gorgi, Goredi, and Aki is butchering a mammoth, so on and so forth. Um, crafting a bow, butchering a mammoth. Lot are going to be butchering a mammoth. I just got my hundredth bone, which is knowledge, and a trader arrived. So let's see. They have goat domestication for sale. Let's see if I'm able to buy it. I have some spare wood, a sling I don't need, some picks. No, there. So, commission is average, but I do find this to be expensive. Hmm. I might not be able to buy it. I'm going to try, though. What I ought to do is, yep, stockpile a bunch of... Um, all right, there we go. Stockpile a bunch of extra skins or something. So goat domestication allows you to find wild ibex and domesticate them into goats, uh, which can be bred and slaughtered for meat. So if I go into storage, I don't yet have, uh, let's see, let's hit Uh, F7 will allow me to open goat domestication, which is required for stables, sheep domestication, and goats. Sheep domestication is a little bit more interesting because that allows you to get wool. I did just get enough technology to unlock, and I'm going to unlock uh, thatching and weaving. Those are going to be my next uh, important ones to unlock. So if I go back into the... Uh, technology here. Thatching is required for huts, storage huts, granaries, stables, weaving, outfitter, uh, workshop, mud, masonry. It is a prerequisite for a lot of stuff. So mud is pretty straightforward. You get mud from the riverbanks and it becomes a resource that you can collect. So I'm going to collect up to 20 of it. And then if I go into my buildings, as you can see, there is new stable object that I'm able to build. I'm going to put stables near my farm. And then if I go into storage, there's storage huts, which are upgraded version of storage tents, and granaries, which allow you to preserve food longer. So I'm going to set up a granary right next to where I cure all my meats. Thatching, I would say, uh, radically changes your, uh, your game. And then it also allows you to upgrade your tents into huts if you have enough straw and mud. So... For straw and mud, obviously, I planted a whole lot of barley, and that's because I knew I was going to need the straw really soon. Uh, so if we check my technology here, I need two more storage tents for the knowledge. I'm going to go ahead and build those. Because soon they're going to be obsolete. So I might as well get them down now. So I'll build one storage tent there. And... Hmm. One storage tent here. They're not all that necessary. I don't actually need the storage, but I want the knowledge, and it's pretty low-hanging fruit for knowledge. So thatching is unlocked. I am going to be replacing a lot of the tools that I just sold off. Um, workload is way too high. Yeah, I know. As soon Now that it's fall, I have to harvest the fields, and that requires a lot of manpower. Uh-oh. A bear is attacking a young girl. Well, that's not good. Inexcusable, Mr. Bear. It killed one of my dogs, too. Alright, bear is dead, which gives me some knowledge because it's the first bear I hunted. All the other bears I've killed are cave bears. Uh, but I'm not going to stop at one bear. These youngins are going to die too. 
You killed my dog. I'm gonna John Wick you. Oh, nope, I'm not. I have my first raider attack. They're attacking from over here. So what this does, this alert, I believe you can find this in F6 as well. Anyone with a weapon will assume a combat role. Everyone else will go inside and hide in a hut. And as you can see, they automatically sort of stack up in a big blob of defenders. Uh, pretty much at the area that they will be coming in on. And that's it. That's the first raider attack. They killed another one of my dogs. But I managed to kill all of the raiders because I had prep time without uh, myself dying. Which is swell. Workload is too high. You'll often see around planting and harvest time of the farms. Uh, if you want to min-max it, what you could do is you could limit other tasks like harvesting and extracting mud or stone, stuff like that, around the dates when you need to uh, plant your fields because you're always going to be bottlenecked for work when it's time to work the fields. That's just something I, I always tend to see. So killing those raiders gave me some knowledge, and I almost have enough knowledge for weaving. So thatching and weaving are go hand in hand to be able to make more advanced clothing, uh, which keeps people um, either warmer or colder, depending on the types of clothing, and also happier, which is important. So certain tasks like um, bringing the straw to the haystack are only really done when you have some idle time. So because my workload is so ridiculously high right now, um, we're not going to properly clear the fields. And I gotta be careful about that because, um, because if you don't clear the fields, you end up with, uh, with some rotten grains and straw out in the fields and that's no good. Uh, so as you can see, the raiders did leave behind a bow and a flint spear. There's stuff to be gained besides knowledge from raiders, which is worth knowing. And, hmm, population reached 20, knowledge plus 3, new human is born. But I don't really see that I have 20 people, but I'm not complaining. Let's go ahead and unlock weaving. So weaving allows you to place... A weaver and an outfitter. A weaver makes cloth from flax and wool, and an outfitter makes that uh, linen and wool into clothing. Uh, this goes hand in hand with flax domestication, which is here, which allows you to plant flax in order to get linens, and also sheep domestication, which allows you to domesticate mufflon and other sheep, or just buy sheep and shear them for the wool. Uh, I tend to do do both because they're better than the default clothing of leather and skins. Um, speaking of leather and skins, let's go ahead before I uh, before I move up to linens and wools, we will make 125% of population for leathers and skins so we don't run out of clothing if we uh, all of a sudden have a little population boom. So if I go into F2, you can see the welfare is kind of high, so the likelihood of me having a little pop boom is, is there, it's present. Which means I ought to, right now my workload is still pretty high, so I am not going to give them any more tasks, and the game keeps warning me my, my workload is high. We're building a granary, which will be great. Granaries help to preserve food longer than just keeping it into general storage. So as you mouse over, as you can see here, for instance, I have a whole lot of cured meats that are about to rot. Um, we're also storing straw in these just because we didn't have the haystack prior to storing them. So here's my first granary. Gives me knowledge. Ba-boom. And we will allow in this granary to store... Uh, let's see. We're going to store cured meats and fishes in here. And not raw meat or fish. Grain, sure. Bread, sure. Alright, everything but the raw stuff. The raw stuff has to go to the curing 
food dryers. I don't want them to store it in the granary early. And then we'll have stables that we have to make. So I'm going to kick up the amount of people. Let's edit the zone actually to increase the size. And we will try to make our first set of stables going on. In yet another winter. So now as you can see, these, well, I'll show you the tooltip. Uh, it preserves it as long as possible. It's a raised hut. I guess the idea is that in your tents, rats and vermin and insects will get to it. And in the granary, it's raised. So all those ground critters that otherwise would spoil your food are prevented from doing so. Looks like I'm very low on sticks. So I'm going to increase the amount of people gathering sticks. And I would love if the fields were cleared. As you can see, they're doing it piecemeal grabbing like the grain and straws but because my workload is so high they're doing a very very bad job of clear clearing the fields properly they will get to it but a little bit slower well guys that is all the time i have so we unlocked uh about a third of the neolithic tech this episode next episode i'm going to go into some sort of weaving and animal domestication and eventually defense against raiders where we'll build walls and gates and the like if you have any feedback for me drop me a line i've been um sort of answering a lot of the feedback that i can and a lot of you have awesome awesome tips so the tips for instance of selecting hunters comes from nami and the reason i explain the way i hunt comes from benriful so i thank you both for your feedback and i've been getting feedback from a lot of other people and if you'd like to discuss Dawn of Man or any of the sort of strategies that I've employed, hop on Discord. The link is right on your screen, and I'll have to catch you all later. Thanks for watching. Adios.